What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And today's video, in my quest to put out a video about every running back in the NFL before the season starts. Uh, I already talked about DeAndre Swift. I already talked about Brees Hall. Today's video is a redraft-centric, 2022-centric breakdown of Dalvin Cook's potential, his upside, his outlook in this new offense with Kevin O'Connell coming over from the Los Angeles Rams staff. Let's get into it. In the last four years, uh, on a points per game basis in full PPR, Dalvin Cook has finished ninth in 2021, second in 2020, second in 2019, and 18th in 2018. And he's hovered right around, you know, 18, 22, 19 carries a game for those seasons. I mean, 2018 and 2019, he's like four and a half targets per game. The last two years, he's been at 3.9 and 3.8. Those have kind of been, you know, the workload that he had. But last year, dipping down to RB9 after, you know, a couple of RB2 finishes. And really that came from a, you know, he, he was really good on a per touch basis as a runner. Um, still really effective there. He caught a lower percentage of his passes than he typically has. He sits at right around like 80% catch rate for his career. Last year, he caught just under 70% of his passes. So that affected him a little bit. But the biggest thing that affected Dalvin Cook's fantasy finish last season was his touchdown rate, where in 2017, his touchdown rate was 2.7%. 2018, 1.5%. Then 2019, 52 And 2020, 5.1%. He had a career 4.3% touchdown rate going into last season when in 2021 he scored touchdowns at a 2.4% rate. He only had six on the season and that caused his his dominator rating to dip below the 25% mark for the first time in at least three years. In 2020, his dominator rating was 35%. 2019, his dominator rating was 33%. Last year, it was only 23.6%, due in large part to him not scoring very many touchdowns. You know, the Vikings last year were 12th in yards, 14th in points, a decent, not, you know, great offense. And Kevin O'Connell, former Rams offensive coordinator, formerly the offensive coordinator for uh, the Washington football team, is now the head coach in Minnesota. He brings over, I forget what the dude's name is, like Wes something. I don't know. His offensive coordinator is also from the Rams staff. You know, they were last year, they were ninth in yards, eighth in points. And so they had a, you know, a more efficient offense. If, if we just took the Rams production from last season and slapped Dalvin Cook's, you know, like dominator rating based production in there, based on his dominator rating from last season with the Rams offensive numbers, he would have finished as the RB9. Based on his 2020 dominator rating with Rams offense from last year, he would have finished as the RB2. And based on his dominator rating from 2019, based on the Rams offense from last season, Dalvin Cook would have finished as the RB3. And so... You know, we've got this this Rams offense, this Rams system that's supposedly, like, better, you know, going to unlock all sorts of things in this Minnesota offense. At least for Dalvin Cook, the results would have been basically the same. He already finished as RB9, RB2, and RB2 in points per game the last three years. If he held the same share of the offense and, you know, was just transplanted into the Rams system with that same share, he would have finished as the RB9, RB2, and RB3 in the last three years. So, begs the question, like, why are people so hyped about this change in offense when it wouldn't really make that much difference in like a hypothetical world. So why are we hyped? Number one, I think we are hyped because the Rams and now the Vikings are likely going to throw the ball more often than the Vikings have in the past. Early down pass rate in neutral game script situations. So not when the teams are trailing, not when they're way ahead, just like on early downs when the playbook is wide open, what sorts of plays are these teams calling? The McVay offenses, the O'Connell offenses in the last five years. Um, so that would be the Rams in 21, the Rams in 20, Washington in 2019 when O'Connell was the offensive coordinator there and then previous to that he was not coordinating any offenses so we'll just dip back into the into the Sean McVay well for the Rams in 2018 and 2017. In those years the early down pass rate rank for the McVay slash O'Connell offenses was 5th, 10th, 31st when O'Connell was calling plays and then 6th and 3rd going back to 2017. So consistently in the top 10 only not in the top 10 the one year when O'Connell was on his own in Washington and then for Minnesota, the ranks in those categories are 18th, 27th, 29th, 11th, and 21st. And so pretty consistently, these McVay, you know, O'Connell offensive systems are calling pass plays at a much higher rate than they typically have been 
in Minnesota. And so the theory is, with O'Connell bringing the McVay system over from the Rams into Minnesota, they'll call more pass plays on early downs when the playbook is wide open, which pass plays are more efficient than running plays. That equals more efficiency overall. That's a good thing. I think the second reason why we are more, you know, kind of enthusiastic about Dalvin Cook going into 2022 is the use of 11 personnel in this McVay O'Connell offense. And 11 personnel basically means three wide receivers on the field. It's one running back, one tight end, which equals three wide receivers on the field. And in the past two years, the Rams have used three wide sets at a 65% rate in 2020 and then at an 86% rate in 2021. And during the same time, the Vikings have used three wide receiver sets at a 29% rate rate in 2020 and at a 47% rate in 2021. So way more often is it being used in this McVay O'Connell offense than it has been with multiple offensive coordinators in the last couple years in Minnesota. And why do we care about three wide? Why do we care about offensive personnel? Because more wide receivers on the field means more defensive backs on the field. More defensive backs on the field means lower defenders in the box, like less linebackers, less defensive linemen, you know, a higher amount of defensive backs on the field. Those guys are smaller. They're not lining up close to the line of scrimmage generally. So lower box counts, which equals higher yards per carry. A lot of research into defenders in the box pre-snap being a large determining factor in the outcome of any given running play. And so lower box counts equals more efficient running. And, you know, in the last three years, O'Connell offenses slash like the Rams with McVay have had lower average box counts on their carries than the Vikings have in three of the last four years. So consistently easier box counts to run against. Dalvin Cook should be playing in more three wide sets this year and should therefore have more, you know, an easier time running the ball against lighter defensive fronts. So that's, you know, point number two. Point number three is one that I've seen a lot of talk about in kind of fantasy football media, NFL media, just kind of Twitter in general. Um, the last few weeks is that Dalvin Cook's receiving usage is going to get a big bump in this O'Connell system and kind of three prongs there. Number one, he's going to be used more. Number two, he's going to be used more creatively. And number three, he's going to be thrown more high value targets than he has been in Minnesota throughout his career. You know, this is a little bit more difficult to kind of parse through and determine whether or not it's true. Like, I think it's clear that he'll have an, he'll have an easier time running with lighter box counts. But The receiving usage aspect of this is a little bit more difficult, so I'm going to split it up into those three different categories, use more, use more creatively, high value targets, and see if we can kind of figure out what's true and what's not here. Will Dalvin Cook be used more? There's been a lot of talk about a more pass-heavy offense with this O'Connell system, a larger receiving role for Dalvin Cook. Justin Jefferson recently hopped on the Ringer NFL podcast. Justin Jefferson did a guest spot there and talked about how this is now a a pass-first offense rather than a run-first offense like it has been in the past. He mentioned, you know, Dalvin Cook um, being thrown the ball more rather than running the ball more. There's been a lot of talk here about Dalvin Cook you know, specifically getting more passing work, given that this is a more pass-heavy offense. And the question I simply ask myself is like, is that true? In the last five years, Minnesota running backs have been thrown to, the, the target share for Minnesota running backs was 17th in the league in 2021. It was 12th in the league in 2020, ninth in the league in 2019, 28th in the league in 2018, and 16th in the league in 2017. So that's back to the beginning of Cook's career, generally in the middle of the league there. So that's what, 16th, 9th, 11th, and 17th in four of those five years. There was the one year in 2018 and there were 28th, but generally right there in the middle of the league. During those same years, running backs in the like Rams, O'Connell, McVay system have been throwing the ball far less often. In 2021, the Rams threw the ball to their running backs at the lowest rate in the league. In 2020, the Rams threw the ball to their running backs at the 31st rate in the league, so second lowest rate in the league. In 2019, Rams threw the ball to their running backs at the lowest rate in the league. And during the same season, O'Connell running backs in Washington were throwing the ball at the 12th highest rate in the league. So a little bit better there. And then if you go back to 2018 and 2017 with this McVay system with, with Todd Gurley, that was prime Todd Gurley in LA. In 2018, Rams running backs had the 22nd target share in the league. In 2017, they were 21st. So other than the one year in Washington, consistently below average target shares to running backs in this system in the last five seasons, and especially in the last three seasons, 32nd, 31st, 32nd in the league. And that's with multiple quarterbacks. That's Matthew Stafford last year and Jared Goff the previous years. And then in Washington, that was Case Keenum and Dwayne Haskins, essentially. And so basically what we see is that like in recent years, this Rams system is not thrown at their running backs at all. And then in, you know, prime Todd Gurley seasons, Rams running back receiving usage was was essentially equal to Vikings receiving usage in 2021. They had a 19.6% target share in Minnesota to 
running backs in 2021. Prime Todd Gurley in 2017, Rams running backs had a 19.6% target share way back then. So it's been essentially equivalent back with Todd Gurley in more recent years, dropped off precipitously. And I've been working with a lot of these like route metrics, target metrics, um, looking at like which running backs are lining up where in their targets, which running backs are running, you know, what percentage of their routes are made up of basic routes and things like that. So I've been working with a lot of like route tree based receiving metrics um, in the last couple of weeks. And I've developed a metric called route adjusted target earnings or rate essentially as a, uh, as an acronym. And basically what that means is on any route type, like on a swing pass or an angle route or a wheel or a screen, league-wide, there's a certain rate at which running backs running those routes are targeted. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but like screens are the most highly targeted route by route type for running backs, which, you know, intuitively makes sense. If you're calling a screen, that's like the number one option on the play. Running backs are generally thrown the ball when screens are called. On a swing pass, it's much less often because in that scenario, the running back is more like a check down option or like an angle route, you know, relies on a lot of skill for the running back. Can he actually get open on an angle route? And then he's, you know, being thrown the ball. So each route has a different, you know, like expected target value, really, as far as how often are running backs targeted on those routes. And using this statistic, route adjusted target earnings, we can see how often above or below league average, essentially above or below expectation, are running backs in these various offenses being targeted agnostic to the types of routes that they're running. And so, you know, if Todd Gurley is exclusively running screens, he's obviously going to be targeted at a very high rate, you know, like targets per route run. Whereas if Dalvin Cook is lining up at wide receiver and, you know, trying to beat corners on every play, he's being asked to do more advanced things, but he's going to be targeted on a per route basis a lot lower, even though agnostic to the routes that he's running, he might actually be targeted more frequently than Todd Gurley is given the disparity in route types. I digress, but route adjusted target earnings tells us, you know, given the routes that they're running, how much more or less often than expected are these guys being targeted. And running backs in O'Connell offenses or Rams offenses in the last five years were targeted 6% more often than expected in 2017, 14% less often in 2018, 3% less often in 2019, again, 14% less often than 2020, and then 26% less often than expected given the routes that they're running in 2021. So consistently very low earned targets based on the routes they're running in Los Angeles in this O'Connell McVay system. Whereas in Minnesota, just looking at Dalvin Cook, he's received more targets than expected given the routes he's running in the last four of five years. Last year was actually the only year of his career where he was below expectation there, but he was 56% above expectation in, in 2017, 2% above in 2018, 18% above in 2019, and 10% above in 2020. Last year, 9% less. So a pretty big step down last year, but generally he's been targeted at a higher rate than expected given the routes that he's running, contrasted with Rams running backs who've consistently been targeted on their routes far less often than expected. And so what does all that mean? It means Rams running backs are being targeted not very often at all. And it's not just because they're not being thrown the ball or they're, they're running, you know, routes that we shouldn't expect targets on. Even given the routes that they're running, they're not being targeted very often. And so that's part of the reason why I am a little bit less, you know, enthusiastic about like Dalvin Cook being used a bunch because running backs in these offenses, even going back to prime Todd Gurley, have not consistently been targeted at a high rate, even given the routes that they're running. So that's point number one about Dalvin Cook being used more. Let's look at, is he going to be used more creatively? And so what sorts of things indicate creative usage for a running back? as a receiver, at least. I think number one would be like diversity of route tree. Um, if you're just running swing passes and screens, or even if you're just a one trick pony lining up, you know, in the slot, running things like that, you're specializing things, but you don't have a diverse route tree. I wouldn't say that that's creative. And so a diversity of routes that you're running would be an indication of creativity to me. Number two would be usage on non-basic routes. And so those things I just described, like screens, swing passes, you know, throws to the flat, check down based routes, really. If you're doing things other than that, even if it's not diverse usage, if it's non-basic usage, that could be an indicator of creativity to me. And then the third thing would be diversity of alignment. And so are you exclusively catching passes just lined up out of the eye formation or next to the quarterback in the shotgun or, or whatever it is? Or are you being asked to like line up out wide or move into the slot and things like that? Diversity of alignment would indicate creative usage to me. And as far as that point goes, I think that one is true. Dalvin Cook is likely to be used more creatively as far as like where he's lining up 
in the offensive formation um, more than he has in the past. So if we look at the percentage of snaps taken outside of the backfield on passing downs for Dalvin Cook in the last five years as a, as a percentile. So he was in the 72nd percentile in 2017. So he's moved, moved around quite a bit as a rookie. And then the last four years, 46th percentile, 13th, 23rd, and 48th. So consistently below average. Um, that's with five different offensive coordinators, by the way. Consistently below average, regardless of offensive coordinator, since his rookie season in how much he's being moved around the formation. By contrast, Rams slash McVay slash O'Connell running backs have been moved around the formation at an above average rate every season in the last four years. 90th percentile in 2018, 64th percentile in 2019, 83rd percentile, and then 75th percentile in 2021. I think it's much more likely that Dalvin Cook gets moved around more this year than he has in the past. The second point there was basic route usage, and I've defined basic routes as screen passes, throws to the flat, and check and release routes where a guy like looks to see if there's a blitzer that he needs to block. If not, he releases out. If we look at percentiles again of how often guys are running those routes as a percentage of their total routes run. And so what portion of this guy's like route inventory is made up of basic routes? For Dalvin Cook in the last five years, he was at 58th percentile in 2017, 77th in 2018, 39th in 2019, 67th in 2020, and 76th last season. So other than 2019, consistently above average in running a lot of basic routes, you know, above the 66th percentile in three of those five seasons. So he's generally just running a lot of basic routes, whereas running backs in McVay, O'Connell, Rams offenses in the last five years were at 48th percentile, 88th percentile early on. Those are the Todd Gurley years. And then since then, 17th, 25th, and 28th percentiles in the last three years, Rams running backs, O'Connell, McVay running backs have been, you know, running a lot more than just basic routes. They've been running angle routes, dig routes, out routes, slants, things like that. So they're they're being asked to do a lot more advanced things, really, than Dalvin Cook has been asked to do so far in his career. And then if we look at route diversity, not just, you know, advanced or basic, but like just what is in your arsenal as a route runner at running back. And um, I, I developed a metric that kind of measures route diversity. If you take any individual route, like screens, and let's say screens make up 10% of your total routes run, and then angle routes make up 1% of your total routes run, and you do that for every route, then you can find the standard deviation among those percentages to find the diversity of your route tree. And if you're just, you know, kind of specializing in a couple things, you'll have a large standard deviation. If you are running lots of routes frequently, you will have a low standard deviation, which indicates more route diversity. And so, the percentile ranks in route diversity for Dalvin Cook since he was a rookie, 27th, 47th, 56th, 51st, 53rd. Started out a little bit lower, got more comfortable, got more responsibilities as a route runner lately, and now he's been just above average the last three seasons. Rams running backs during that same time frame, 63rd, 22nd, 55th, 64th, 57th. So, you know, close to average as well, but, you know, consistently a little bit more than Dalvin Cook has been asked to do. Pretty equivalent route diversity, less basic usage from LA running backs, O'Connell running backs. I think this is an indication, you know, what a running back is asked to do as a pass catcher, as a route runner, is very system dependent, but talent often dictates usage as well. And I think that that's indicated by some of the running backs in Minnesota with Dalvin Cook. Like in 2019, Dalvin Cook was lining up in spots that like weren't just the backfield at a 13th percentile rate. So like not very often at all. The same season, Amir Abdullah was lining up in places that weren't the backfield at a 43rd percentile rate. So not above average, but much more than Dalvin Cook was. Um, that same season, Dalvin Cook was running 30 ninth percentile basic routes. So low, but Amir Abdullah during that same season was running a zeroth percentile amount of basic routes. So same running back, same team being asked to do far more advanced things than Dalvin Cook was doing. Uh, same season, Dalvin Cook had 55th percentile route diversity. Same season, Amir Abdullah had 98th percentile route diversity. And so, you know, you could say, oh, it was just the system. Dalvin Cook wasn't, you know, in a system that was conducive to like doing creative things at running back. It's hard to say that when there was another running back on the team who was being asked to do very creative things. Same thing in 2017, you know, going back to his time as a rookie, but just, just more evidence that this isn't just the system. Basic route percentage for Dalvin Cook in 2017, 50 58th percentile. So above average usage 
on basic routes, same time frame, Jarek McKinnon, 36th percentile. So he's being asked to do a lot more advanced things than Dalvin Cook was in the same season. And then route diversity that same year, Dalvin Cook in the 27th percentile, Jarek McKinnon in the 70th percentile. So big, big gap in route diversity. That's two different seasons of Dalvin Cook's career where there's a clear example of another guy on the team being asked to do like a lot more diverse, a lot more advanced and creative things as a running back than Dalvin Cook was. So it's hard to say that it's just the system that Dalvin Cook has been stuck in. And, you know, despite that, you could also say that, like, okay, he's been lightly used, but maybe he's been, like, very effective on these advanced routes. Like, maybe he, he can do it, he just hasn't been asked to do it much. If we look at, like, the rate at which he's been targeted on these advanced routes versus league average target rates on these routes, he hasn't been above average or even close to average on some of these. On curl routes, he's been targeted 3% less often than league average throughout his career. On out routes, 10% more often than league average, so that's a good sign. On angle routes, 21% less often he's being targeted on angle routes than league average. Dig routes, negative 5%, so 5% less often. Wheel routes, 15% less often. Drag routes, 5% less often. Slant routes, 1.5% more often. So out of these like, you know, seven-ish routes that you could classify as like non-basic routes, either where, you know, you're being asked to like line up in front of somebody and beat them, or you're going downfield for a target, or you're just lining up somewhere not in the backfield. These like more advanced routes consistently, other than two of them. So five out of seven, Dalvin Cook is being targeted less frequently than league average. And so there's a lot that goes into a target, whether you earned it or not, like with somebody else open or, you know, were you just the, the last option on the play, whatever. But it's hard to find evidence that Dalvin Cook is like actually good at these things, you know, in spite of not being asked to do them very often. And even going back to college, he had a 67th percentile ADOT. He was targeted like a yard and a half downfield on average, which is a good thing. So that's, you know, kind of one point in his favor as like, can he do advanced things as a receiver? But he lined up in the backfield almost exclusively. He had third percentile, you know, alignment you know, in the slot or out wide. So basically just exclusively being lined up in the backfield in college, although being targeted a yard and a half downfield on average. So who knows there? The next part of this kind of receiving puzzle is that Dalvin Cook will supposedly be thrown more high value targets going forward in 2022. And kind of how I've looked into what makes a, a target high value is on top of, you know, kind of the expected target rate on a given route, like screens are are very highly targeted routes. But then there's like a yards per reception and then by extension, a yards per route run value to each of these routes. Like running each route has a certain expected value based on the yards you'd get if you caught the pass and the rate at which you'd even be targeted on the route. And so we can determine which routes are most high value given league-wide yards per route run numbers for each of those routes. In the last five years, if we just look at routes that have a higher yards per route run average than the collective routes, um, so things just kind of like above average, Dalvin Cook has been running those routes at a 70th percentile rate as a rookie, then 78th percentile, then 91st, then 50th, then 53rd. So much more often he was running high value routes early on, lately just around average, and then with the Rams, 62nd percentile um, high value routes in 2017, then 31st, 95th, 51st, 31st. Not a strong pattern there out of like Rams, McVay, O'Connell offenses. I'd give a slight edge to the way that Dalvin Cook was used, um, you know, consistently above average and really far above average early in his career. If we just looked at screens, screens are the easiest route I don't know if they're the easiest route to run as a running back. I'm not a running back coach, but you know they're the they're the most highly targeted route um, on a on a per route basis among running back routes, and they're just the number one most high value route. They have 4.86 yards per route run on screens versus 1.34 yards per route run on the collective like all running back routes. So they're what, like three times more valuable, even more than that, almost four times more valuable than an average route. And so the rate at which Dalvin Cook has been used on screens in the last five years, 65th percentile, 74th, 92nd, 76th, 72nd. With the Rams, the last five years, Rams running backs have been thrown the ball on screens, 78th percentile, 34th, 77th, 69th, 28th. I'd give the edge to Minnesota usage there. Dalvin Cook has been used on screens more often than Rams running backs have during the same time frame. And so kind of what I'm forced to conclude here is that I think it's clear that Dalvin Cook is going to be lined up as a wide receiver more often. Beat reporters have said that. Justin Jefferson said that. Kevin O'Connell has mentioned it. It's just, and it's, you know, we have a history of Rams running backs being lined up as wide receivers more often than Dalvin Cook has so far in his career. He's going to be lined up out wide and in the slot more often than he has so far in his career. But I also think he's unlikely to see a big increase in target share, given that A, Rams running backs have not been throwing the ball very often at all. 
They've not been throwing the ball very often, even when adjusted for the routes that they're running. And the last time we saw Rams running backs be thrown to at, you know, the same rate that Dalvin Cook and Minnesota running backs have been thrown to was like three and four and five years ago when they had prime Todd Gurley on the team. And so I also think he's unlikely to be thrown higher value targets given the disparity in like screen usage and just high value target usage overall in Minnesota versus in LA the last couple of years. You know, while Rams running backs have been used on basic routes less often than Minnesota running backs, the evidence is fairly inconclusive on Dalvin Cook's ability to win on advanced routes himself. Like maybe he can do it, maybe not. We haven't seen it yet, but I do think that more pass attempts, but fewer throws to running backs in general, all in all, this like feels like a wash. Like the Rams are going to be a higher volume offense, especially as a passing attack than they ha- than the Vikings have been in the past. But with this change in kind of offensive system and how they treat running backs in the passing game, it feels like a wash. But then people say, okay, but what about Todd Gurley? He had 87 and 81 targets back in 2017 and 2018, which would be a big jump up for Dalvin Cook from his, you know, 63 targets. And even though the Rams weren't throwing a lot to running backs even back then, Todd Gurley was, you know, above 80 targets both of those seasons. My retort to that would be Todd Gurley had an 84% and an 89% snap share in those seasons. He was almost never coming off the field. Dalvin Cook misses three or four games every single season, and he's never been above a 72% snap share in his career. Let's say he's thrown to at the, the exact same rate on like a per play basis that Todd Gurley was in those seasons, while Dalvin Cook matches his career high in snap share. That would give him like 70 targets, 55 receptions based on his career catch rate in 14 games is basically what he plays every year. That would mean throwing to running backs more than this offense has in the last three years, and it would mean an 11.5% target share for Dalvin Cook based on, you know, pass attempts for the 2021 Rams, for an example, which would be right in line with Cook's career averages. And so that's where I think um, we can kind of see this maxing out for him. That's kind of the high end of what I think we should expect is 70 targets, 55 receptions. Those would be slight bumps up from his career to- or from Dalvin Cook's career high totals in 2019. I think that's the upside we're looking at here. 70-ish targets, 55 receptions. I think in general, though, this offense is going to be better. Like, I I love Dalvin Cook in fantasy football in 2020. He's currently going as the RB6, but I think there are very legitimate arguments, and I might even put him ahead of, you know, for him going ahead of guys like Austin Eckler, Derrick Henry, and Najee Harris. Tough to put him ahead of Christian McCaffrey or Jonathan Taylor, but those three guys, I could easily see myself taking Dalvin Cook ahead of. I'm less certain about him, you know, receiving this big jump in receiving usage than others are, but A, more play volume, and B, better pass run ratios could equal more targets for Dalvin Cook, even if his rate stats don't go up. And so, you know, regardless of that, I think a return to elite fantasy production is very possible, giving a likely increase in offensive efficiency overall and a, you know, better touchdown luck than Dalvin Cook had last year. We should see him return to career numbers in touchdown rate on a better offense with more pass attempts. I think it's wheels up for Dalvin Cook in fantasy football in 2022. Get wild.